Well, I won't take up too much of your time, um, but I am interested to hear about your story because you are a professional trainer, right? Um, yes. And you do, and you do compete in, in in agility competitions, and you also hosted Animal Planet. So, how did you get to researching canine cancer? Well, long story short, my wife and I lost a couple dogs um, just nine days apart. Um, they were both 14 and a half years old, wonderful, wonderful dogs. And then a couple months later, my heart and soul dog, Reveille, was diagnosed on my birthday with um, nasal lymphoma and chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I kind of didn't know what to do. And um, I took all the emotion I was feeling, and it was kind of like, okay. I felt like I was Mickey Rooney talking to Judy Garland when I was telling my wife, I want to start a cancer foundation. I, I had no clue what I was doing. Absolutely no clue. And she kind of went, yeah, go ahead, go with God. Um, mm -hmm. You go do that. And through the help of, of friends, and an incredible mentor by the name of Dr. Greg Ogilvy, I started a foundation. Good for and you. Uh, thank you. Um, and all I originally wanted to do was raise money and give it back to another foundation to do something with. And Dr. Ogilvy told me, no, you don't want to do that. And I said, but Greg, I'm only one person. And he said, no, 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 you have a passion. I feel you can do greater things than just raising money and giving it back to another foundation. So I said, okay, what am I going to do? Well, I, I, I had no idea because I never thought it. I just wanted to start a foundation and raise money to give money away. So I thought about it and I thought about it. And I came up with this cute name, Clear. Canine Lymphoma Education Awareness and Research. I and love that right. name. <laughs> well, I said, yeah, I got a name. Well, after I got a name, I, I, I realized um, that as I was dealing with Reveille's lymphoma and I was learning all about what she was going through and what we were doing to help her, I realized that it was all about education and awareness. Mm -hmm. No matter how much research is out there, if the general public is not educated and aware of cancer, the research isn't going to help anyone. And so by accident, I came up with this really great name that now my focus is strictly on education and awareness until I feel the foundation is making enough money that we can actually do something in research versus giving $10,000 here and $10,000 there in research. I'm hoping this movie generates um, awareness and that people look at this and hopefully maybe distribute it or sell it all the money comes back into the foundation nobody's making a penny on this right everything comes back to the foundation and I'm hoping we can raise enough money to actually maybe start some research you know the idea is when I was talking to a lot of oncologists a lot of them said people don't know dogs get cancer right let alone, let alone specific cancers you know, and I, I was taken back by that. I'm going like, that doesn't sound right. But everyone I've talked to, almost everyone says they, most people do not realize dogs can get cancer. So the whole idea of educating and making more people aware really is what this is all about now. And that's the reason for the documentary was I wanted to create something that I could give to people to help educate them, help make them more aware of this devastating disease. And I felt this was the way to go. How do, well, maybe you can clarify this for me. Um, as for pet owners, how do they know that their dog would have cancer? Like, is there, what's the preventative met method that you're teaching? Well, the easiest thing to do is feel your dog you know, once a month, twice a month, for any lumps, bumps, lesions. Maybe your dog is feeling lethargic and they're not usually lethargic. Mm -hmm. um, 
just like you and I have our wellness checkups, we go get our physicals when we're supposed to. <laughs> uh, dogs need them as well. And if you take your dog, not just to get a vaccine, but if you take your dog in to get a physical checkup, right. your veterinarian knows exactly what to look for and what to feel and everything else to find out if maybe your dog is sick or isn't sick, or has a disease, you know, for any, any number of reasons. So wellness checkups are very important. And once a year and twice a year as your dog gets older, seven years of age, eight years of age, maybe twice a year. But it's just simple, just watching your dog is one of the best ways to find out if something's wrong. And if you think something's wrong, go see your, your vet veterinarian. You know, and another great preventative measure you can take is feed the best food you possibly can. Not everybody can afford to, to feed their dog, you know, yeah. or home cooked or any of these great foods out there. But there's nothing wrong with giving the best food you can, you know. You can, you can feed them some vegetables every now and then, you know. You can feed them things that can help their immune system, you know, up the, the, um, the um, uh, I'm lost for words right now. But just help your dog's immune system by just giving them some berries, some good vegetables, right. antioc antioxidants. You know, that's, that's good for the dog. Or um, exercise. Uh, just exercising your dog. And it's good for you, too. Um, simple things like watching the, the, the cleansers you use around the house and the pesticides and herb, herbicides that you put on your lawns. Oh, I, I mean, can imagine. All these things are very easy to watch and monitor. And, you know, I still laugh when it says on, on these lawn chemicals, safe once it's dry. It's not safe once it's dry. It's still there. And the dogs are going to walk on it and they're going to lick their paws. They don't have shoes. They don't wear clothing like we do. So what may be safe for us really isn't safe for them. And it's a good idea to check those, the, your chemicals. And there are some safe things you can use for your lawn. But um, it's it just be aware of, of the environment. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, are you working with uh, like a team of vets to do the research? Um. We had, for, for the documentary, um, our consultant was Dr. Greg Ogilvy. Okay. And from Dr. Greg Ogilvy, we used him to help us figure out how we wanted to do the movie. And then once we figured out what we wanted to do, we found three incredible stories of people whose dog is fighting the disease and what they're going through, and we were able to speak with that dog's family oncologist and what they're doing and how they're going about it. And each one of the three stories um, intertwines with um, expert analysis of what's happening, advice of what to do and why it's being done, and how these people feel. I mean, mm. the movie actually helps you understand more because you, you if when Reveille was diagnosed with lymphoma, if somebody would have handed me the documentary I've created and they said, watch this, it would have helped me so much, tremendously. But because I did a lot of my own research and looked at a lot of things, I missed some things. The documentary doesn't give you all the answers. It doesn't even come close to answering all the questions. But it gives you a good basis of what is out there, that there's options, you know, and solutions for everyone. Exactly. And you just, you just have to have a good team of people around you. You can't fight the disease alone. You need, you need your veterinarian. You need your oncologist. You need your family and your friends to help you with this. And, and, and your, your local veterinarian has to take it upon themselves to tell the client, I'm not an oncologist, I'm not a specialist. This is this cancer or this can be this cancer. You need to go see them. And I don't know um, why some of them don't do that. I don't know if they're worried about losing a client. I think the client would just 
be grateful that they're saying you need to see somebody special. I, I'm not sure, but not all veterinarians refer to specialists. They just don't. And maybe there's not enough specialists in the area, right? Or they're or they're afraid that you know here you need to go spend another five hundred dollars. But at least tell them and suggest it. Let the client say, I can't afford it. But at least give them the option. Right, the option. Yeah. That's the big thing. They need the option. The client needs the option to make the decision. I just heard a story from uh, a very respectable oncologist who a person brought their dog to them. And their veterinarian had told them, you can't do anything about this cancer. And I'm not going to be too specific because I don't want anybody to know what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> and when they finally came to see the specialist, it was too late. But four months prior to that, things could have been done. Mm -hmm. So they were just told there was nothing they could do. What's your opinion on uh, holistic vets? <laughs> I love holistic vets. I know. Vets. I love them. Reveille, um, she was Eastern Western medicine. She got her chemotherapy. She got radiation. We did all the holistic stuff we could possibly do between, you know, mushrooms and herbs and acupuncture. We did all of that stuff. I mean, she was an agility champion. And her last year, while undergoing chemotherapy, radiation, and everything else to help combat the drugs, which we did holistically, she had the best year of her career wow so it's not a death sentence cancer is not a death sentence you know yes you're you're told your dog is going to die in two days two weeks two months two years but that doesn't mean feel sorry for yourself and let it happen yeah exactly i i when they told me the diagnosis it went in one ear and out the other and i never heard anything else after that i got home i felt sorry for myself I woke up the next morning and I said, I'm not going to do this. I'm never going to let my dog know she's sick. I'm going to take it upon myself to never let her know she's sick because I don't want anything I do to bring her down. And I didn't. I didn't let her know she was sick because, like I said, she competed at the highest level. She was on the podium in Canada, the national podium in the United States, all undergoing treatment. Wow. So it's not a death sentence. They can live their lives. Honestly, I don't believe they know they're sick. But if we if we know they're sick, <laughs> that's okay. Go. <laughs> I don't believe they know they're sick. If we know they're sick and we feel sorry for ourselves, They'll then our dogs are going to feel that. Yes. They're going to pick up on that, exactly. But if we're like, we're, we've are we got a bucket list. We're going to go play on the beach. We're going to go take that hike I always promised you we were going to do. We're going to go every time I leave the house. You're go, you're in the car. We're, you know, we're going to go take a ride. We're going to, all the stuff you want to do with your dog, go do it. Just go do it. Have fun and take a lot of pictures. <laughs> Selfies. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting us know about your story. And how can people get to see this documentary without being there? Well, what we're what we're doing is we're premiering the documentary. And when all is said and done, we, we want to hit the film festivals and try to get some notoriety for it. We also would like to sell it and distribute it so that some funds are coming in. And once again, like I said earlier, all the funds go back into the foundation. Nobody's making any money. I don't take a salary. Mm -hmm. So it all goes back in to help increase awareness, education, and so on and so forth. At some point in time, when you know, if everything's willing and all the stars and moon and sun align right, mm -hmm. and we can sell this, when all the contractual obligations are done, it will be available to everybody for free. Now, it doesn't mean we're probably not going to have a one-day stream mm -hmm. on 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 uh, Vimeo. Maybe you know, it's like okay, start announcing. Everybody's going to be able to see it 
here's the screening day, it'll be up for 24 hours, then it'll be down, you'll have a chance to see it. I just need to make sure, because I'm, I'm not a movie maker, but I am now. Um, I had no clue about the Cancer Foundation, and I've done that. I've done all this in two years, and I'm still learning. So I don't want to put the movie out and then have it not be available to this, that, or the other thing because it's it's been seen by everybody. If, you know, I, I'm working on it, but I'm hoping that I can do a one-day screening for everybody who would like to see it. And that's that's what it's all about. It's all about changing the journey for for our best friend, our dog. Yes. If we can do yes. if we can do certain things to help prevent things, we're changing the journey, and that's what it's all about. If I could give my dogs an extra year or two years, I'm going to do what I can. I applaud your efforts. I really applaud your efforts, Terry. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, good luck on Saturday. I'm pretty sure it will go well. I'm hoping. I'll be in the back corner standing up. I'll probably lying down in the fetal position. but <laughs> We'll see. All righty. We'll talk soon, Terry. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye.